Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect and today we're gonna go step by step together and learn everything we need to know about the hue saturation adjustment. Right from the core concepts to the coolest applications, we're gonna cover it all. With tons of examples and real world scenarios, I'm super excited and I hope you are too. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we get into exploring the amazing possibilities of hue saturation adjustment, let us first understand what is hue, saturation and lightness. So hue saturation and lightness are the three distinct attributes of color. Any color that you see around yourself, in fact anything that you see around yourself that has a color, even if it is grey or white, has a hue, saturation and lightness value. It is those three values that bring that color into existence. For example, let's have a look at this pen. What color do you think it is? Black, right? But I can say it does have a hue, saturation and lightness value. What is the hue? Hue can be anything. What is the saturation? It can be anything, but I'm very sure that lightness here is minus 100 not exactly minus 100, if it was, it would be a completely black patch, but somewhere around that. Let's understand this with the help of this simple example. Focus at the color of the text. In simple language, hue is what color? Saturation is how much color? And lightness is brightness or the amount of light. Make sense? No? Let's take another example. No problem. So here we are in Photoshop with a blank document. Now, I'm going to open up my color picker so that you can understand this better. Have a look closely. And I want you to just look in this slider. Don't look over here. Just look in this slider, the rectangular one. All right? So right now, H is selected. It stands for hue. All right? Now, if I change it, look what's changing. The color. What did we learn before? Hue is what color? So hue decides what is going to be the root color. Now of course you can decrease the saturation of that color, increase the saturation, you can just make it brighter or darker, but the color is being defined by this rectangle since hue is selected. So whatever is selected, this rectangle will show exactly that. Right? So right now it's showing hue. If I select S, let's go ahead and select green as the root color. So hue determines what color. So let's say we choose green. Now comes S. It stands for saturation. If we select S, have a look, this slider changes. Right? So whatever is selected, the rectangular slider will show exactly that. So we're going to choose S. Now, it helps you decide how much saturation you want. Saturation, what did we learn? Saturation is how much color. It's the amount of color. If we decrease the saturation, there will be no color. It will be grayish. If we increase the saturation, it increases the amount of that color. Okay? Just look at the rectangle slider. I don't want you to get confused over here. Now, if we choose B, it stands for brightness. It helps you control the brightness of the color. So look at the slider. If we decrease it, it makes it dark. If we increase it, it makes it brighter. It's the same color we chose in hue. So those are the three attributes of color, hue, saturation and brightness. Now, when hue is selected, this rectangle lets you choose the hue. And this square, large square, lets you choose the saturation and brightness. So if you go to the left, it decreases the saturation. If you go to the right, it increases the saturation. If you go up, it makes it brighter. If you go down, it makes it darker. It increases or decreases the lightness. If we select saturation, this slider helps you choose the saturation. And this square lets you choose the hue and the brightness. So if you go to the right, the hue changes. If you go to the left, the hue changes. If you go up, makes it brighter. If you go down, makes it darker. If you choose B, brightness, this rectangle or slider helps you choose the brightness. And this large square 
let's see choose the hue and the saturation. So if you go to the left or to the right, the hue changes. If you go up or down, the saturation changes. So this is how it all works. But now that we know that color has three attributes, hue, saturation, and lightness, and all of them combine together to bring the color into existence. Now the hue saturation adjustment just lets you manipulate those three values. That's it. But the number of things that you can do with it is limitless. Let's start with our first example. So here we have our first example and there are two ways in which we can apply the hue saturation adjustment. Number one way is by using an adjustment layer, which is my preferred way. To do that, all you have to do is to click on the adjustment layer icon and then simply choose hue saturation. It creates an adjustment layer at the top and every layer beneath it will be affected by it. Of course, you can create a clipping mask, but have a look at this. You can change the hue saturation from here. Once you're done, you can just collapse it. You can always get back to it. You can just double click on the symbol and get back to it and you can change it anytime. All right. The other way is by using an adjustment, a simple adjustment. Once the layer is selected, all you have to do, you have to go to image, adjustments, and then there is hue saturation. Any changes you make here will be burnt down to the pixels. If you hit OK, it's just burned down. There's no way you can change it. You have to like undo a couple of times and then apply it again. That's hectic. And for example, you're working on a composite with a lot of layers and you have already gone a lot of steps further. There's no way you want to just undo everything and get back to it. No. So if you wish, I don't recommend it, but if you wish to apply it through adjustment for some exceptions, here's what you need to do. So before applying, always right click on the layer and convert it to smart object. Click on this one, convert to smart object. Now when you go ahead to image adjustments and then hue saturation, and then you make any change and then you hit okay, it will be applied as a smart filter, which means that now you can change it. All you have to do is to double click on hue saturation, the properties would show up and you can change it to whatever you like. But this does not apply to all the layers which are beneath it, like we have in adjustment layers. And that's why we always recommend adjustment layers. Now we're going to start with some general applications of hue saturation adjustment, but along the way, you and I are going to explore some nifty little tips and tricks. It's going to be fun. Let's get started. Create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then simply choose hue saturation. Now let's say I want to increase the saturation of this. I want to boost the colors. Very simple, just simply increase the saturation. Have a look at that. Just that adds so much more punch to the image. So here is the before, here is the after. Maybe you want to change the hue a little bit. Maybe you want to make it more yellowish. So if you take it to the right just a little bit, it becomes a tiny bit yellowish. Now do not touch the lightness on master. Whenever master is selected, do not touch the lightness because it simply makes it white and black. And you can simply do this with the help of a solid color adjustment layer. Don't touch the lightness, it's useless. Anyway, if you're working on a master, just touch the hue and the saturation. So that's a little trick there. Secondly, when you increase the saturation, it increases the amount of color in every single pixel. So it amplifies the color of every pixel. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to increase the saturation of the dark areas or the super bright areas. We just want to increase or enhance the color of the areas which are already saturated a little bit. And to be able to do that, I have a tutorial already about enhancing the colors using a saturation mask. And thank you for watching this tutorial because I'm going to give you an action to do that automatically. So all you need to do, go to the description, download the action and simply just go to window and then actions. Now, once you do download the action, you will see it over here. So random picks actions, I have an extraction for you. So this is the one, saturation mask control. So select that action and play it. It's gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer with a saturation mask. Now, if you increase the saturation, it's gonna be very natural, very, very natural. You can also play with the hue a little bit, see? It's so natural, even if you increase the saturation all the way up. If there was no mask, if I hold the shift and click on the mask, 
it would have gone crazy. So that's another tiny little trick that might be helpful to you. All right. And if you're one of those who's into outdoor portraits, this is going to be a fantastic action for you. By the way, if you're interested in learning how this action works and how to build one, you can watch this video. So let's open the actions panel and apply that action. Just play it. Now, once the action is played, all you need to do is to double click on the symbol of the hue saturation, simply crank up the saturation. That's all you need to do. Let me just bring it right here. Just crank up the saturation. Wonderful, isn't it? You can also play with the hue a little bit. Maybe make it a little warmer. And there you go. Just a tiny touch of it. Here's the before, here's the after. Makes the world of difference. Now it's time for us to talk about simple targeted adjustments. So what is the targeted adjustment? No matter what the adjustment layer is, okay, no matter what the adjustment is, a targeted adjustment targets at a specific thing. It can be a color or it can be a brightness level. It can be anything. Let's say we create a curves adjustment layer. For example, it's always my favorite. Click on the adjustment layer icon and let's choose curves, right? Let me stick it in here. If I choose this hand over there, all right, and if I hover over this, I don't know what fruit that is, but if I hover over this, let's hover over the kiwi. I think it's a kiwi. So it's showing me inside the curves in the form of a circle, once I hover over it, that it falls under this brightness level. So if I want to brighten this area, all I have to do, just click and drag it up, just like that. But it's also brightening this area. So to darken this area, click and drag it down. So right now, while we are in curves, this targets brightness levels. While we are in hue saturation, this would target a color. So let's delete the curves adjustment layer. We don't need it. If we click on the adjustment layer and then choose hue saturation, similarly, you will find a hand there. Now, pay close attention to it. Have a look at the direction of the hand. It is pointing upwards with the arrows pointing sideways. If I create a curves adjustment layer, have a look at it closely. Have a look at the hand. The hand is pointing horizontal and the arrows are pointing vertical, right? But in the hue saturation, the arrows are sideways. In the curves, the arrows are from top to bottom. So keep that in mind. It just means that in hue saturation, you don't have to drag it top and bottom. You have to drag sideways. So if I click on this one, I want to change the red. At the saturation of this one. So if I click and drag it up, it's not going to do anything. But if I click and drag it sideways, it's going to change the saturation. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's showing sideways. Now, here's a super interesting thing. If you hold the control or command and then click and drag sideways, it's going to change the hue. Have a look. It's changing the hue. And if you lift off your hand from the control or command and just drag it right and left, it's going to change the saturation. So it's a great way to visually control the colors just by dragging. Let's delete the curves adjustment layer and get back to hue saturation. So let's adjust the colors. Maybe select the hand tool first. Maybe I want the saturation to be a little less over here. Maybe I'll change the hue a little bit. Maybe here I might increase the saturation and let's play with the hue. The hue is all right. So you can just play with these colors and have fun. Maybe here, this looks right. So you can totally manipulate colors. It's completely under your control. Now, if you don't like to do it by dragging, you can also do it with the drop down menu. So even if you drag it, have a look, yellows is selected. If I click and drag over here, automatically reds are selected. It's showing right there, right? So if you don't want to drag, let's reset this. Click on the reset button. You can just simply, let's say I want to manipulate the reds. So I'm going to select the reds and manipulate from there. I want to manipulate the yellows. I'm going to select the yellows and maybe manipulate from there. You can also control the lightness. You can make them darker or you can make them brighter. Now, here is where lightness is useful. If you're in master and then you change the lightness, it's going to make it black and white. Makes no sense to add lightness in master. But when you're in a color, let's say reds, 
you can actually apply it. You can make the lightness a little darker and then increase the saturation to add more pop to it. That's a little trick. Or you can maybe increase the lightness and increase the saturation to add more pop. You can go either ways. Maybe, let me show you that as well. You can increase the lightness and then add more saturation to add a certain kind of pop. But I recommend decreasing it in this case. For green or maybe for yellows, let's decrease it a little bit and then increase the saturation. Have a look. So what did we learn? We can either use the hand tool right there, which is technically called the targeted adjustment, or we can simply select the colors from the drop down menu and manipulate it. The second thing that we learned here is that in master do not touch the lightness however if you're in any other color you can just manipulate the lightness any which way you want and it gives you a natural result you can make it black or you can make it even white it's cool now i want you to remember the past not so much far ahead just a little bit remember in the beginning of the video i gave you this example of the spin right i told you it's black right it does look black but it does have a hue saturation and lightness value i said the hue can be anything. The saturation can be anything. But I'm damn sure that the lightness is minus 100. Let me show that to you. If I increase the lightness to minus 100, not in master, but let's go ahead and select some color, let's say yellows. If I decrease the lightness to minus 100, you can change the saturation as much as you want. You can change the hue as much as you want, but it's not going to change anything in these areas. Have a look. It, the areas that have gone black, it doesn't change anything in those areas. Even if you change the lightness all the way to plus 100, change the saturation, it makes no change in these areas which is affecting. It might make a little bit change sideways, but not in the main area. So here's something to learn. Once the lightness is in the extreme, you cannot change the saturation or the hue. Similarly, even if you're in master, it does make sense, right? If the lightness is at 100 plus 100, it's completely white. There is no saturation or hue. Now it's time for us to move to advanced targeting, where we go ahead and manually select the range of colors that we want to target. How? Let me show that to you. So let's create a hue saturation adjustment. Let this is just a simple rainbow. All right. So if we create a hue saturation adjustment layer over here, and let's say we select the greens. Let me bring it right here so that you can see what's happening. All right. Let's say we choose the greens and then we change the hue all the way to the right. This color, this area is being affected, right? So let's bring that back to zero. If we choose let's say blues and if we change the hue this area is being affected what if i want just a shade of blue to be affected not the whole area just a little bit of it so let me just zoom in for you okay not all of the blues what if just this shade of the blue well that can be done very easily all you need to do is this first of all let's reset everything click on the reset button all right, this is the reset button. Now, once you have done that, with the help of the hand tool, all right, click on that area that you want to select. Then take the hue all the way to the right. I also take the saturation all the way to the right. It's completely saturated, so you cannot see it in this image, but in real world scenarios, it will help if you take the saturation to the right as well. Now, look at the range. It has selected that particular range. Now I can make the range narrower by making it narrower this way. We are only manipulating this area. Now if I change the hue, have a look, only that area is being affected. Is it confusing you? Maybe it is confusing you because the range is around the corner. Let me take something which is in the middle. Let's say if we take yellow. All right, let's reset this one. With the hand tool, I click on the yellow. It's just going to bring up the yellows. All right, it doesn't make much of a difference. Now, when you change the hue, all of this area is being affected. What if I just want to target just one shade of yellow? Simply make the range narrower like that. All right. Now, if you move it, see those areas are being affected. Now, here's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Look at the rainbow. It's the same thing right over here. 
right? The top bar shows the colors that you can target and the bottom bar is the result, all right? So let me make it clear to you. Let's reset that again. Now, if I, with the hand tool, select the green area, let's say, okay? Now, if I change the hue over here, see, we can see that the green area is selected and that's why we have the range over there. Now, when I change the hue, the top bar remains the same, but the bottom bar in that area changes. So the bottom bar is the result bar, the output bar. It shows you what's gonna happen in the greens. So the greens will become blue. Have a look at the image, it has become blue, right? Now, you can make the range narrower by taking the sliders from the side to the center. And you can move the range by holding from the center like that, okay? Now you might think, why are there two sliders on both sides? Good question. Now have a look at this. The colors that we are targeting, if we zoom in, see, the target is very harsh. What if I wanna make the transition between the areas that are selected and the areas that are not selected smoother? That's when the side sliders come into existence. So if I make the distance larger between this slider and this slider, see, the transition is becoming smoother. If I do it on the left-hand side, see, the transition is becoming smoother. It's just the transition. You can also change the lightness in the same area. You can make it completely black or white. That's absolutely upon you. Now let's learn a little bit about the eyedroppers as well. So if I reset it, if I want to, let's say, select this shade of green. So I can choose the hand tool, click on that area, and if I don't wanna move these sliders, I can simply subtract the other areas. First of all, take the hue all the way to the right to see which areas are being affected. And then you can simply subtract the areas which you don't want. Let's take the lightness to the left as well. So with the minus eyedropper tool, select that one, you can just say, I don't want this area or I don't want that area. You can just simply subtract that area from here. Have a look, you're simply subtracting. If you want to add an area, you can click on this plus eyedropper tool and you can start adding an area. So let's say I want to select all of the greens and the yellows as well. So let's zoom out. So I wanna add the greens and a little bit of the yellows as well. We can do that. Or you can fresh select an area. So if you choose this eyedropper, let's say I don't want any of that. I want to select blues. So click on the blue so it will select the blue. But the range will be that large. You have to use the minus to kind of subtract the areas like that. So you can use the eyedroppers too. You can manually move the sliders as well. That's completely upon you. Makes sense, right? No? Let me show some examples. Have a look at this wonderful frog. It has a certain blue color to it. Let's say I want to change the blue to something else, all right? So if I simply add a hue saturation adjustment layer, let's say we add it. Now I'm gonna stick it to the left-hand side so that you can see what's happening. Now if I simply change the blues, if I select blue from here, blues, and then if I change the hue, it's not accurate, see? It's affecting some areas, some areas are still blue, and that's when we need manual control and advanced targeting. So you can use the eyedroppers to add that area or you can simply use these sliders as well. So I usually prefer the sliders. I make it very narrower first, this is my technique. Then I move the hue and the saturation all the way to the right to see which areas are being affected. Then I move it to just the areas which are completely blue. So right now, as you can see, most of the areas are being affected. Now it's time for us to make it larger so that all of the area is affected and stop at just the point where the greens or the other areas which are not blue are being affected. So if I go a little too further, see all of the areas are being affected. We don't want that. So we just want the blues to be affected like that. Now let's make it softer by increasing the gap between the side sliders. Let's take it a little bit to the left as well. You can extend it from here. See, now all of the areas are being selected. So I'm gonna bring the saturation and hue back 
to normal and then you can change the color to whatever you like maybe pink a little bit decrease the saturation a little bit and maybe the lightness so you can just play with it and have fun as much as you like now this technique can be extremely useful in correcting skin tones let's move to our next example as you can see we have a picture of a baby now if you zoom in have a look at the skin it's a little too yellowish and we have some red patches as well we can easily fix that with hue saturation adjustment so all we need to do is to create a hue saturation adjustment all right let's stick it in here so that we can see what's happening now first of all let's select the yellows so with the help of the hand right there i'm going to click on the yellows take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right to see which areas are being affected and then make the slider narrower make the range narrower so this is the range of colors that we are targeting and at the bottom we have the result so right now those areas will become blue so we want just the yellows to be affected okay so this is fine let's extend it not the reds just the yellows so this is fine just at this point we can make it a little smoother like that okay that looks right okay that looks perfect now bring the saturation and the hue back to normal now let's play with the hue first if i take it to the right it's making it greenish we don't want that but if i take it to the left see it's making it warmer reddish it's taking away the yellow so a little bit to the left maybe i'll increase the lightness a bit maybe decrease the saturation just a bit just touch and have a look at the before and after so here's the before with all the yellow and here's the after as you can see all the yellow has been gone if i zoom out a little bit before after so the yellows are gone now it's time for us to take care of the red patches now we don't have to remove all of them because these make the baby look natural we have to remove just some of them which are distracting so let's create one more hue saturation adjustment layer and this time let's click on the reds with the help of the hand tool just click on the reds that we want to target take the hue and the saturation to the right you can also use the eye droppers but i like using the range sliders it's completely a personal preference see just the nose is right now selected now let's make it softer like that we don't want to select the lips it's a very narrow selection see that's the advantage of manually controlling which area specifically you want to target so this is the area we will bring the saturation and the hue back to normal and if we take it to the left it makes it more red so if we take it to the right it's going to fix it see it fixes it decrease the saturation a bit maybe play with the lightness make it a little brighter all right let's have a look at the before and after here's the before here's the after it's removing those red patches but it's making the baby look a little unnatural with the red she was looking a little nice she or he i don't know but in some areas we do have to remove it so simply turn it on select the mask press control or command i take the brush for the foreground color white flow and opacity at 100 just paint on the areas where you want to remove the reds so i'm going to paint a little bit over here maybe a little bit over here as well see that red is a little disturbing over here see now the reds are being removed from only the areas which can be a little distracting there we go there we go have a look here's the before here's the after see maybe from here maybe we would have to add some color to his hand but that's let's just do it let's create one more hue saturation adjustment layer and this time with the help of the hand tool we will select this area increase the hue and the saturation just make sure that area is completely selected all right so the hand is completely selected great now bring the saturation and the hue back to normal and let's increase the saturation just look at the hand nowhere else maybe take the lightness down a bit that's it maybe hue to a little bit warmer select the mask press control or command i take the brush with white as the foreground color just paint on the hand that's it see the warmth it adds to the hands now this area is becoming a little too reddish we have to subtract from there there you go it was so simple so you can go on and on and just edit it the way you want now let's just change the hue a little bit there you go now 
an important thing you have to keep in mind is this. Let's say you're working on some other layer. Now you're back to hue saturation of the hand. See, everything has returned back to zero, right? Now if you change the lightness, it's gonna just make it black and white and saturation is just not gonna work in that area. And it all goes crazy. Why? Because the master is selected. When you get back, by default, the master will be selected, not the area that you targeted. So all you need to do here, first of all, bring them to zero, then move to the area that you were targeting. So for us, it was red. Have a look, we have also moved it a little bit. See? Now you adjust it. There you go. So here's the before, yellow with red patches, and here is the after. Skin tone corrected, and it looks natural. With this technique, you can also make stuff completely black or white. Let me show that to you. For example, in this image, if you want to make the blue eggs absolutely white, like a normal egg, all you need to do is add a hue saturation adjustment layer again, and then simply just target the blues, so, with the help of the hand tool, select that area. Okay, take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right. Just make sure all of it is selected. At this point, as you can see, these areas are not. So, we will have to extend it. Okay, now all of it is selected. Extend it from this. We don't want any other area to be selected. So, be mindful. All right, this looks fine. Now, bring it to normal. Just simply increase the lightness. Normal egg. Have a look, here's the before, here's the after. You can also make it a black egg if you want to. Fun, isn't it? Similarly, you can use this technique to create designs on colorful objects. For example, have a look at the scar. Let's say I want to create some flames or something like that. You can take your time to do it. But the basic concept is this. If I create a hue saturation, and let's say I target the yellows. So I target these yellows and I make it completely black. All right? Let's extend it so that all of it is black. Now, if I select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, I can just simply, let's say, with the help of the pen tool, I can draw some crazy designs here. I'm doing something very fast, but you get the idea. You can take your time to do it. Uh, maybe something like this. I'm just having fun here. You can take your time, right? Something like this. And I finished the selection. Right click, make selection, hit OK, and fill it with white. Alt backspace with the foreground color white, just simply press Alt backspace or Option delete. See, Control or Command D. Have a look. You can create some crazy flames, designs. I'm lazy, you do it. Coming to the last feature of Hue Saturation and that is Colorize. So what Colorize does is that it takes your image, makes it black and white, and then applies one color to it. It doesn't actually make it black and white, but the process is the same. Let me prove it to you. So here we are with our final example. If I take away all the colors by pressing Control Shift U, Command Shift U, and then if I create a solid color adjustment layer, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. I choose a color, let's say this red, okay? I hit okay. And then when I change the blend mode to color, have a look at the kind of look it creates, right? Keep this look in mind. I'm also gonna save it to my history. So if I go to my history, I'm gonna click on this button, it creates a snapshot, all right? Let's go back a couple steps. So this is the original image that we had. If we simply add a hue saturation adjustment layer and then check colorize, right? And select that exact red color, it will give the exact same look. If I create a snapshot out of it, this is snapshot two, that was snapshot one. Have a look, snapshot one, snapshot two, exact same thing. The saturation is a little less, so simply increase the saturation like that. And let's create one more snapshot. Have a look, snapshot three, snapshot one. It is the exact same thing, right? So that's what it does. It makes it completely black and white and then add some color to it. That's what Colorize does. Now this can be very useful in applying a uniform color to a certain area. For example, you want to unify the skin tones. This can be very useful then. Let me show you an example. So here we have our original image. We add a hue saturation adjustment layer, and then we check Colorize. Now just look at the skin, just the skin. 
Now maybe we'll take the hue a little bit to the right. Maybe increase the saturation a little bit. We are getting the skin color. All right, this is fine. Now select the mask, press Control or Command I. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white. Simply paint on the skin. You will get a uniform color on the skin. Now this will bring you one problem. And I'll talk about that problem later. First, simply paint on the skin. I'm not being very accurate. Let's make sure it's all accurate. Now let's have a look at the before and after. So here is the before, here's the after. It's all looking nice. Maybe let's subtract it from the lips by painting black in the mask. All right, so here's the before, here's the after. The only problem that I see here is have a look in the dark areas. Dark areas have so much color in it. But in the real world, the dark areas have less saturation. So simply double click on the right hand side of the layer and take this away from the dark areas by taking the slide of the underlying layer from left to right. It's very harsh. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the slider and just take it away. Also keep in mind there is very less saturation in the highlights. But since this image is already bright, it's not necessary to remove it from the highlights. Otherwise, I would suggest that. So make it softer. There you go. Hit OK. It's looking very nice. Now you can just revisit the settings by double clicking over here and changing the hue and the saturation to your liking. Maybe you want the hue to be a little bit more towards the right, a little more yellowish like that. And now you can play with saturation. And there you go. Have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Uniform skin tone can easily be created using this method. Also, the colorize feature can be useful in colorizing black and white images. And we have a tutorial about that. Check this out right here. Now there are many, many applications of hue saturation adjustment. It can be used to fix color costs. It can be used to fix tanning and a lot of other things. And all those videos are linked in the description. So make sure to check them out. So that's pretty much it for this video. Just a very quick little recap. Hue is what color? Saturation is how much color, the amount of color. And lightness is how bright or dark it is, the brightness of it. That's pretty much it. And the hue saturation adjustment controls those three values. That's it. You can either choose to target one specific color or change it globally. Your choice. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody, forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.